Hey everybody, I'm at Guitar Summit 2024 and I'm on the Cream Guitars stand with Lewis, who is the founder, designer, head honcho. Now, I walked past your stand about 50 times at the NAMM show. I know. Going, <laughs> this might be the coolest stand that there is at the NAMM show. It was like massive pink, thousands of guitars. <laughs> and I know we kind of came home going, yeah, we should, we should do some, some of these guitars. And then we're back at uh, Guitar Summit. Uh, and obviously in the six months before, yeah. these guitars still aren't available in the UK. So yeah. we thought, well, we better remedy that and do the deal to bring them in ourselves. Is this something together? Yeah. <laughs> so look, tell me, because your background, you have, a, you have an interesting background, uh -huh. right? So uh -huh. tell us about your background and okay. how on earth you decided to start okay. a guitar company. Well, a little bit of myself. Uh, I'm a doctor, I studied medicine, have two degrees. Uh, then I started my first company, I started to make firefighter suits. Then I started another company to inject plastic. Then I started another company to press stamp metal. Then I started another company to make circuits. So uh, then I started another company to make te textiles. So uh, in our companies, in our group now, we are in 27 countries. We are ISO, so uh, our quality is from the aerospace yep. uh, quality certification. So. Uh, but I'm a guitar player since I was seven years old. It's the dream, uh, right? It's a dream. It's a dream. And I really enjoy to play music. I really enjoy guitars. I love guitars. And for me, guitars uh, need to evolve. For me, guitars need to be something different. And when I play guitars, because I love all guitars, you know, yep. I'm a collector. Yeah, you want a Les Paul and you want uh, a Strat. You, you, need you need every everything. every that's, guitar that's what he says uh -huh. you need everything you need, the, you need every guitar. from andertons obviously from andertons yes. <laughs> because you're going to learn something different you know from a strat from a lesbo from a prs from a cream every guitar is going to inspire you to play different and you know uh when when, when i was like in the idea to start to make uh, our, our own guitars it was exactly that uh, I already have all, had all these guitars in my wall and, and playing them, but I wanted something new. Yeah. I wanted to be in a place that I haven't been before. So I had to redesign everything from the shape, the finishes, the versatility of the electronics, the resonance and the capacity of making harmonics like with the brass plate that you can see here. Is this, is this on every cream guitar? It's on every cream guitar. It's a <laughs> brass plate that goes from the neck yeah. to the bridge and connecting that and making like a loop. That's the, the, the last time I really saw something like this was back in the 70s and 80s. Yamaha uh -huh. had the SG2000 that yeah, used to yeah. have a big brass plate uh -huh. at, that you couldn't see. It was un underneath the, the bridge. And people often said that was a big part of why uh -huh. the SG2000 had a, 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 a so much sustain. Uh, but I've never seen it connected to the neck join. That <laughs> sounds like a, in my head, it sounds like a sensible thing to do to get that sort of transference of vibration. Definitely. It's going to, it's going to make something in your sound. Yeah. And in fact, it's going to put you maybe even in an uncomfortable position. But that's exactly what we want. I guess. That's exactly what we want, because that is going to make you start to play different. That is going to inspire you to start to turn all the knobs in different positions. So So what is there, like, at the moment, two basic body two shapes? Two basic body shapes. Oh, look at that, man. Look yeah. at the three. I don't even know if the camera will be able uh -huh. to pick this up, but. I yeah. assume this is a flat finish, it's right? It's a flat finish. But it's an optical illusion because it no, looks... No, no, no. In fact, we carved the wood. Oh, okay. So it's carved uh -huh. with a with epoxy on then, the top uh -huh. or something. We apply the chameleon right. paint. Yeah. Then we apply the epoxy. That's why you can right. see through the epoxy. You That's can see the cool. deepness. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm interested. You've obviously come at this with a technical, like a technical brief, but... I think what stands out most about cream guitars is the visual. Uh -huh. So what's your background in, you know, designing firefighter suits and uh -huh. plastics doesn't, it's almost like you look like a fashion designer. You need to be like a fashion designer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, look at this. I mean, it's so cool. But what, so what's this your- This guitar is changing colors. Yeah. So yeah, well, the idea is that, well, if, Captain, if, if you wear a, a, a nice jacket that you know that you look great. How does this do this? 
Ah, easy. It's electromagnetic ink. Because I can't, <laughs> I can't see a battery. Is there a battery in here? Yeah, it's a battery okay, there. Fine. It's a battery there. An but, electromagnetic but, ink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, what we made is, this is real paint. This is not, cool. this is not any type of lead or there is no light coming from here. This is paint. And, and we change it. So uh, you can put a charge through paint. Through paint. And, it's, and so it's not a light as such. No, it's You're not literally light. changing it's the literally pigment of the paint. Paint. And you are going to choose what color is going to be your guitar. So in the morning, it could be a white guitar for church, then a blue guitar for the pub. How do, you, how do you choose the color? Surely it's random. No, no, no. You can choose the color. Uh, yeah. In fact, you're going to be able to have it with your lighting engineer through DMX, through your MIDI. Aha, yeah, of course, this is the future. Man, uh, we need to evolve, you know? <laughs> uh, so, I mean, if you're, uh, if, if you need, that is so man. <laughs> cool. I mean, I'm thinking now, and this is like if you're playing guitar in a uh -huh. sta arena, stadium yeah, gig or uh -huh. whatever, and, and you want a talking point. Definitely. It's like, oh, cool. If the if the scene is white, the if the scene is white, the guitar is white. But then the solo starts, and the guitar now is red, is yellow. It you could choose whatever color you want. And at Nam, because this is the first one yep. in the world, yep. we made this by hand. That's why it has this lag. But at Nam, we're going to present the finished product. And it's, it's, it's going to have, right now it's one display, but at NAMM we're going to present 66 displays, like all of this, but in small pieces. Now, so you're going to program the color of the pigard. So the pigard could be any of eight colors, all the body, or <laughs> you can make the whole, a whole animations oh, in there. Also, I mean, presumably uh -huh. the, the, the options are limitless. You could have messages on here, messages, pictures, uh -huh. whatever. The idea is to express yourself and express to the, the music and a, a bigger message to your audience. Uh, that's, that, that's the that, idea. That, that <laughs> is, that, I, I, do you know what the crazy thing is? It's the way it changes color. Uh -huh. And I actually quite like the fact that I don't know what it's going to do. Okay. You know, like just, I could, I think uh -huh. I would almost rather just let and it do what it wants to do. Well, right now it's doing <laughs> it's that. Also as well, it's, again, I don't know how this will come across on, on the camera. It really isn't backlit. It's literally just changing color. <laughs> it's so weird. Okay. Yep. Well, right now it's in a random mood. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're, you're going to be able to change it whatever you want it. And, and the idea is that, you know, uh, sometimes tradition, the revolution, mm. the revolution never came from tradition, okay? So that's why we, we need to change. We need to evolve like, as guitar players. We need to put ourselves in different ways uh, to play different. Yeah. And we need to inspire people. That's why the, the shape had to be different. Yeah. The, the, the finish has to be different. Uh, you need a lot of versatility, you need technology, uh, and you need, that's the way to start to play new music. You know what else we need? We need some tequila. We, we need, need some tremendous Mexican food. Let's go for some tequila. I know a great place here, <laughs> Captain. Let's go. Anyway, right, that's it. Cream Guitar is gonna be in Anderson soon. Thank Check you. him out. Cheers, man. My friend. Thank you so much. You're very welcome.
I'm intrigued to try and sort of pick out what I can hear through the headphones with this. It's a, it's a JB in the bridge, which I've got a couple of guitars with JBs in from Seymour Duncan, and it's a pretty bright sounding mid rangey kind of humbucker, uh, mid gain. <laughs> Interesting to, I mean, I'm playing through headphones and uh, trying to sort of pick out whether does it feel like this is sustaining more. If anything, it probably feels like it's a bit more of a mid rangey. Uh, it does feel like if I pick softly, there's some extra sustain there um, that perhaps I wouldn't normally expect. It also sounds like it's kind of, if I was through a conventional amplifier, it would be wanting to go into feedback, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice guitar to play. It's got like a skinny rosewood neck. Probably feels a little thinner actually than something like a, a Fender. And it is a, it's a much more compact take on an Explorer style. Almost gives me sort of St. Vincent vibes maybe or, but I mean, look, this is an intriguing guitar range. You're drawn to it initially entirely because of the aesthetic. And then you sort of get into it and you go, hey, do you know what, he, he has changed. There's a few things on here that other brands haven't done. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I'm gonna try the other one if I can. Can I give you that? Can I try that one? Thank you. This is the one you said it's got the, pia the piezo in it, right? Yes, so. Okay. Right here, if you do this, yep. this is now a humbucker. Yeah. If you do this, you have these two coils. Yeah. If you do this, it's a humbucker. And where's the piezo? Uh, sorry, sorry. Piezo, it's here. This is for even all the streets, not streets, electric avenue, ski road. So everything <laughs> passes through the history of rock and roll. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a five-way blade here. I've got some, uh, that activates the piezo. Here I've got some different combinations. So I'm getting mixes of these guys running as a humbucker if I pull this out. And then uh, these two here if I pull this one out. So I'm probably not gonna go through it all. I am intrigued what the piezo sounds like, but let's just start in normal.
Um, um, I mean, honestly, who wouldn't want to be on stage and pull one of these out for the encore? Everyone's talking about that gig, right? Anyway, uh, I'm excited. We'll have a bit of a deeper dive when they arrive at Anderson's. And uh, thanks for tuning in. See you when we're back. <laughs>